Hi, today we have the pleasure of having Jane Ogle, the Deputy Director of Healthcare Delivery Systems at the California Department of Health Care Services. And we're going to, we have an opportunity to ask her a few questions about CalMedi Connect. And um, I think I'd like to begin with maybe Jane having you just give us a little overview about CalMedi Connect. CalMedi Connect is a program for persons who are eligible for both Medicare and Medi-Cal. And the concept of this program is to bring the Medicare benefits and the Medi-Cal benefits together with long-term services and supports, including in-home support services, multi-service senior program, community-based adult services that used to be called ADHC, and nursing facility services, all under one umbrella of a health plan that has had experience with both Medicare and Medi-Cal and experience with coordinating care. The ultimate goal is for the consumer to have one phone number to call to coordinate their services and receive their full spectrum of benefits. In the very early days, two and a half years ago, when we started working on this, we held focus groups across the state, and I was struck by a couple of people who came forward and talked about their experience with up to 26 different doctors and 52 medications that they were trying to manage on their own. And the concept of CalMediConnect is that we'll help them manage that. They have a place to go to get help with managing those physician appointments, making sure that their medications are appropriate and to have no uh, adverse interactions and have a support system that they don't really have today. Bringing in the in-home support services as a complement to these services and I know there's been a lot of concern among the client community in in-home support services that something is going to change in their benefit and I think it's important for people to understand that this is not about changing the in-home support services benefit it's about allowing a whole spectrum of caregivers to integrate that benefit into the health care plan for that individual. One of the big lessons learned from the transition of seniors and persons with disabilities is the importance of reaching out to the uh, fee-for-service provider to explain the program so that they can help their patients and clients understand what's happening. So one of the things that we're working on very diligently is to reach out to a wide range of providers who can explain to the clients what's happening and what the benefits of this program are. In CalMediConnect, there are several ways that we're going to be monitoring and overseeing the plans and the programs going forward. Right now, we're in the middle of what's called plan readiness review. And in collabor collaboration with CMS, we are going into each of the plans and not only seeing if they've got the right documents in place, but also seeing that they have the workflows in place to make sure that people get the services that they need. After we complete the plan readiness, then we'll go into contracts with the plans. And those contracts will have a withhold for certain quality measures. There are actually 10 quality measures in year one, all of them focused on member access, member satisfaction, um, member um, ability to gain services within the plan. So they'll have to uh, work, they'll have to attain these quality measures in order to receive the money that we'll withhold from the plans until we measure that. And then finally going forward, this is a demonstration on a national level and there are uh, many components to the evaluation of this demonstration, including a group that CMS has brought in to do an, a long-term evaluation of it and including um, about 110 what are called uh, quality measures, HEDIS measures, that the plans will be responsible for reporting on. We'll use that reporting to do not only long-term looking at the uh, program, but also to see if there are short-term quality improvement things that we can do to make sure that if there are issues that we can address them quickly and bring, do what's called rapid cycle quality improvement to improve the access or the patient experience within the plan. But, you know, one thing that's reassuring to me is 
to hear about those measures and to hear about you know not only the incentives the plan have, but if they don't meet these readiness requirements, there will be some disincentives, it sounds like. We've worked very closely with CMS on a couple of aspects for consumer um, grievance and appeal process, also consumers having a, a one-stop shopping for a place to call when they need services. So with regard to the Ombudsman services, it's mentioned in the MOU, but we anticipate having a more fully developed program, working with some of the stakeholders and advocates to have an ombuds program that really um, can be a consumer voice to both the department and to the plans. We also expect the plans, of course, to have a member services program that addresses or has the ability to talk with their consumers in any appropriate language or form. There's also a very robust grievance and appeal process, which in the first year won't change. So if you're an IHSS consumer and you've used the state fair hearing process in the past, that will continue to be your avenue for appeal for IHSS services. For other services, the plan will be your first stop in the grievance and appeal process. And then it would go in uh, two different tracks. If it's a Medicare grievance, it would go up through the Medicare process. If it's a Medi-Cal service grievance, it would go up through the state fair hearing process. We continue to work with CMS to find ways to unify that grievance and appeal process, and uh, that's something that we recognize in the MOU it needs to be worked on as we move forward. One of the things that I've stressed to, to everyone that I've spoken to about this is this is not about taking a Medi-Cal plan and squeezing a Medicare membership into it. It's about expanding those plans to be ready to accept Medicare recipients and the providers that they're used to seeing. So I think the plans are doing a very good job now of identifying those providers and reaching out to them to participate in the program. Where, what's the best place for a consumer to go to get information about this? If I want to learn about the medical side or the IHSS side, where would you recommend I go? I would recommend a couple of places. I'd start out with calduals.org, C-A-L-D-U-A-L-S.org. That's our website that is very robust and has every document and work group that we've had over the last two years up there for people to learn about it. But I'd also rely on the local plans here. Both HealthNet and LA Care have been working with the state for two years on the development of this program and they have uh, member services that can tell people about the plans and what their anticipated participation is. Good. And of course you can always go to PASCLA.org and we can help you find those links. Well, I want to thank you very much for taking the time. I know you're on a very busy schedule and I think the information you provided was very informative and it's good to have you here. Thank you. Thanks very much, Greg.